Well, one of the uh, molds that Pat just threw down has very excellent detail on it, and we were definitely hoping that we were going to get some specimens that were describable, and this guy right here is describable. I mean, it's got excellent detail. It looks like it has claw impressions. It's got well, uh, well defined uh, pad impressions. So, um, if nothing else, we've already su succeeded on this uh, endeavor. So, now if we can just get Pat down off that face, he doesn't he doesn't want to come down. good portion of the track surface had actually um, slid off the face and you can actually see that broken surface there just below the lowermost silputty mold on the face. So a good portion of the, actually, of the tracks had actually slipped off the face, it had eroded away and that was unfortunate but not totally unexpected because it was 35 years ago since they were discovered. I started my training in paleontology in the kindergarten when I learned how to do uh, rubbings on surfaces. And really, that's not too different than what we're doing here. We're putting a big piece of, of plastic vinyl sheeting on a rock surface over the tracks. And then we're tracing the actual shape and relative position of those tracks onto this piece of vinyl. So this was a difficult part of the uh, documentation of these tracks. Trying to attach the vinyl sheeting uh, to the rock face in the wind and the rain. And to keep it there so that all the data is collected in its relative position. Back in the lab we take the green mold that we made off of the original set of tracks in the field and we pour plaster on top of it to make a replica of what the original track surface looked like. The replicas are actually very very um, accurate representations of the original tracks. We can actually even see things like the tips of the claws. You can see all of the same details. The sill putty molding compound is, is very, very, very good at, at, uh, at recreating the original surface. Using information from the, from the molds that we made in the field, then we can measure things like the angle of the toes, and we can also measure the distance between each, each individual footprint. And that actually helps us learn a little bit about how fast the animal was walking. Footprints that are closer together uh, from an animal walking at a slower pace and then as the animal begins to move faster, even up to a running pace, each individual footprint becomes farther apart. Based on what we can find from this set of tracks, it looks like this animal wasn't running, it was just simply walking uh, at a leisurely pace um, across the surface about 150 million years ago. Another bit of information you get from a dinosaur footprint by measuring the actual length of the middle toe, the longest or the third toe, you can actually get a pretty good estimate of how tall that animal was at, at its hip. And based on the measurements that we made from this particular set of tracks, this animal was probably about three feet tall at the hip not too different from a human actually. It was very approximately a human-sized dinosaur. We can also determine from the relative size and spacing of the toes that it was probably made, almost very likely made, by a meat-eating dinosaur. And that's really great because meat-eating dinosaur tracks are rarer than plant-eating dinosaurs. And this is a really exciting aspect of our work is to get a glimpse at one of these early carnivores that lived in the Jurassic of Alaska. So we simulated how the dinosaur tracks might have been made by using a dried crane foot as a model for this dinosaur and pressing the foot down into soft sand, moist sand, and then well saturated sand. Based on our little simulations it seems pretty likely that the dinosaur was stepping into some sort of, of wet but well consolidated sand, which then later became sandstone that we find these tracks preserved in. There were probably at least two different individuals that left a series of footprints across the surface. One of them starts sort of at what is now the top of the block and is walking sort of downhill um, to the bottom of the frame. And another set of footprints show where an animal walked from the lower left-hand corner 
to the upper right hand corner across um, across that first set of tracks although honestly we don't know which what the sequence of the tracks was which one was laid down before the other you can tell that at some point uh, one individual walked across the surface when the surface was moist and maybe one walked across it when the surface was uh, less moist but you don't know in what sequence that occurred yeah we can tell that two probably two different individuals walked across the surface but we don't know who walked first and who walked second yeah in 35 years we lost a lot of information that eroded away from this track surface just just from erosion natural erosion uh, part of the block part of the cliff face had actually slipped away and we lost some of the tracks that we hoped to find that we could see on the original photograph when we got there they were gone today is day number four at the site it is june 23rd wednesday and we are picking up our equipment and preparing to um be picked up at our camp tomorrow by the helicopter. Fortunately, uh, the snow bridges held out long enough for us to do what we had to do. It was a little, a little close there at the end because some of those, the snow was melting pretty fast because of the rain, and that snow was important for us to get across a lot of the creeks safely. And uh, yeah, it was about time we got out of there when we did snowfield was getting smaller by the hour especially with that rain it was really melting fast I think we we're also uh, sorely in need of a, a nice hot shower at this point too I was I was kind of sad to leave we had uh, we had had such a great experience there and I wasn't really in a great rush to leave the day we were picked up by the helicopter pilot by Sam he uh, we wanted to show him the track site, so we flew back up the canyon and showed him exactly where the tracks were located so he could see them from the air from his helicopter. And we also did a little bit of surveying of the canyon walls from the helicopter to see if we could locate other dinosaur footprints from uh, other types of critters. And I, I think it's safe to say we found some very intriguing things up that canyon. Uh, we found even probably more than we expected to find. Yeah, through surveys on the ground and the aerial survey we did with the helicopter uh, we found some things that are uh, definitely on our minds as we wait till next year we're definitely going to be making another trip back there dinosaur would have to be the first posture you want to have is the legs underneath the body right okay. so straight and underneath the body. That's something dinosaurs do that crocodiles can't do. The next thing you'd want to do is be up on your toes, because dinosaurs don't walk with flat feet, they walk up on their toes. Their body is crouched over, so their torso is held pretty much parallel or parallel to the ground horizontally. They have two good front limbs with usually three good digits. So these are the three fingers, digits one, two, three. And then they have their head held in an, their neck held in an S-shaped bend, which I can't do. And then they have a long tail sticking out that way, the counterbalance. Thing. 